seems like every year I sort of forget why I love the World Juniors so much, but then I go and I watch Team USA and I remember this is exactly why I love this team and why I love this tournament. Latvia 6-1, which really was a win I expected to get, and we sort of got in the fashion I expected. Though the game itself, like play-by-play, -play, went quite a bit differently than I actually expected. Overall, I would say that I am only satisfied with the way Team USA played, even though their large margin of victory, because there were so many great parts of the game, but there were also bad parts that if we continue having those, I mean I understand it's still early in the tournament and these boys don't really know each other, but if we keep those bad parts in, we are really going to get our ass beat in future games, to put it lightly. One of those bad parts had to be taking careless penalties. It was during the second period that we just kept taking penalty after penalty after a penalty. And it was like, when are we going to get disciplined? We're taking these stupid calls. We're up 3-1 to one right now. And at points, it, we just started growing in our margin of victory. And we just kept taking dumb penalties. And it was like... Why are you doing this? Like, these are, you are not being defensive enough, and you're just like letting these boys get ahead of you and you're hooking them. And it's like, that's, that's poor play, that's really, that's careless. I mean, I understand because you're young, this is what's going to happen. And that's the style that junior hockey typically is. It's where very offensive, and then there's kind of defensive lapses, which makes it very exciting to watch, but at the same time, frustrating. Because teams like Russia and teams like Sweden, they're not going to do that when you get to the tournament. And we need to do good in the tournament so we can get gold. There were many pluses to the USA's game, and one of those had to be starting on time. Which, yes, that's totally stolen and ripped off from Mike Babcock, but we need to start on time. Especially in a tournament like this, where there's so much offense, where if you sort of sit back even a little bit, you're going to get scored on and it is going to be bad news for you. Unfortunately, like the US has been in previous years, we're a little bit streaky with how we play and we'll be really strong and then we'll sort of la be a little lax and sort of forget how we're playing and give the puck up, make some bad passes, which is what we did, especially in the first period. But then we get it back and that's just natural, I guess, of Team USA or USA Hockey because that's the way I've seen it in the past. And we did that this game, but I think our strengths definitely outweighed our weaknesses because we came away with the win, and we did. Again, I'm satisfied with the way they played. I'm not going to say that they played great. So I think we did adequately enough to where we did not get screwed over. One of USA Hockey's biggest advantages and biggest sort of assets, I would say, is their ability to pretty much make space for themselves and always find those opportunities, even when everything seems clogged up and you're forced to the outside, they can still find those opportunities and make the other team pay for it. And they certainly did in this game. And this was a trait that the San Jose Sharks were applauded for last year in their playoff run and continue to be applauded for. And that is their passing game. USA is so good at cycling the puck that they make it look like that it's a power play when it's five on five. They keep the puck in the opponent's zone for so long and they have so much pressure that it's it's kind of embarrassing, like secondhand, this like, I can feel sort of the anxiety from the other team where they're like, we need to get the puck out of the zone, we need to get this going, but you can't because you're just, you're stuck, there's no way you can't, they just don't clog up the passing lanes. USA will always find a way to pass the puck, they will sauce it over somebody's stick, they will, they will juke you out of your shorts and they will still make the pass, and they are, they've honestly just done such a good job, I'm just overwhelmingly really proud of it when I think about it. Harper's goal was just a prime example of finding empty space and sort of the cycle game. Because while two defenders were sort of juggling the puck at the point, waiting for something to open up, Harper is finding himself nice and cozy at the high slot and sort of moves to the top of the circle, gets the puck, is between two Latvian players who have no chance of stopping him. He just sort of coasts and there we go, wrist are straight into the net. It's beautiful. Latvia's only goal pretty much just came from a terrible pass from USA. It was sort of they were trying to break out and the pass just wound up hitting nobody's stick but a Latvian players who happened to be on a breakaway. It was a pretty incredible stretch pass if you were trying to do it, but unfortunately we weren't, so it ended up in a goal against Tyler Parsons. And you can't really blame Parsons for it because all over it was just a pretty good shot. I mean, you force Parsons back into his net like that, really no goaltender is going to be able to stop that. 
they're not going to be able to expect such a great shot going up high. The second period is when the USA really got stuff going and it started with Colin White's goal. The play all began just because of Adam Fox's incredible vision. He just made an incredible pass up to Tage Thompson and I sort of made fun of Tage Thompson for his lack of hands I guess and maybe he wasn't that agile of a player even though he is 6'5". But he made a great move to get past the defenders, or I shouldn't say past the defenders, but again, create that space to make a pass to Colin White, who just beautiful forehand to the top of the net. It was a great shot, great play. I mean, the USA, they just completely dominated the ice right there. Clayton Keller's first goal of the night was Honestly, nothing spectacular, but it did remind me of last year's World Juniors. Keller's goal was just sort of one of those little rebounds, sort of chip in, sort of just jab at the goaltender and it goes in kind of plays. But at the same time, it really reminded me of Christian Dvorak from last year at the World Juniors, and I honestly loved the way he played. And him and the rest of that second line were probably the most dominant force on that team, despite having Austin Matthews and Matthew Kachuk on the top line. I just really loved that team and I thought that play really reminisced that and I think it shows how versatile this team really can be. And especially Clayton Keller because that was a dirty goal and the goal he gets later definitely is not one. The goal he got later was just a beautiful wrist shot. I mean there's really not much else to say about that. It was sort of like Patrick Laine's but with a little less power because Patrick Laine's wrist shot is sort of like a slap shot combined with a wrist shot. But Clayton Keller's was just that typical, you just look at it and it's it's just going in. It's got such great aim, it, it's, he just like shoots it with a purpose, I guess is what you say. Like, it's sort of that shot where I'm, oh, I'm not just trying to get it on net. Like, no, this sucker's going in and I know it's going in. So it was just great because it came from him not giving up on the play because a Latvian player had the puck and he was just like, nope, you're not going to have this pickpockets him. Goes to the slot and is like, here we go, wrist shot straight to the top of the net, goal for me. And I think that's one of the spectacular things about Clayton Keller. I mean, his two goals that he had were in by no means similar. And that was, that's pretty great to see a, a guy like that that's so versatile. Bracco's goal pretty much just happened because there was no Latvian defender anywhere near him. And he just got to pretty much be one-on-one -on -one with Mittens, the Latvian goaltender. As for Greenway's goal, it came in the final minute, so it was pretty much just a messy goal. It was, there was Latvian defenders falling all over Mittens, and it was just a mess, and Mittens, he had no shot. It was, if it would have been, in short, if it would have been USA players that would have fallen into Mittens, this definitely would have been goaltender interference. It was so bad. He was just laying on the ground, and he had really no opportunity to even try to make a save. So this goal was just sort of a really messy goal, sort of a goal we didn't need. But again, we got it, and there we go, six to one. Pretty impressive. My third serve of the game has to be from Team USA, and it has to be Tage Thompson. The kid has incredible eyebrows and incredible hair, so I think that pretty much lands him a spot as the third star right then and there. But honestly, this kid, I mean, he's 6'5". He's not going to be your typical forward. He's not going to be your Clayton Keller. He's going to play completely different. And I'm really excited to see that because I'm pretty, I'm pretty well into defense. Like, I really like strong power forwards. And that's sort of the vibe I'm getting from him. Because when I saw him, he wasn't so much trying to deke out defenders or trying to do any of that fancy work. He was just being like an all-around sort of like a Jonathan Taves type guy, and I really admire that, and I think that's a really great quality to have. So he, out of the rest of Team USA, is probably the one guy that I really want to get to know, and I really want to see what kind of player he is. Especially because he was drafted in the St. Louis organization, I mean, who knows what kind of person he could be like. He could be like Ryan Reeves, Robbie Fabry, Vladimir Tarasenko. He could be like none of those guys. So it's, I mean, he's just completely sort of an enigma right now. And I'm excited to see how, uh, how it turns out. My second star of the game has to be, has to be, has to be the Latvian goaltender Mittens. Because constantly during the entire game, I just, he was making save after save after save. And they weren't just 
your typical saves of where it was like, oh wow, you know, he shot it right in his glove. How, how incredible. He shot it right in his chest. Great. No, these were incredible chances by the USA that he stopped. I mean, the USA could have very well won 10 to 1 if it wasn't for Mittens. Or even more than that. I mean, he was just, he was the strongest player in Latvia without a doubt. And I really wish he would have gotten the player of the game honors because he was tested a lot and he stood up to the challenge. Not to mention, he also stayed in for all six goals. So he took a beating and he really, I think he's, I mean, it seemed like good leadership out there. I mean... I'm not here to judge what it's like inside the locker room, but I really liked the kid, and I think he's going to be very strong in this tournament. My first star, of course, who else is it going to be but Clayton Keller. I mean, he had two goals on the night. I mean, he did incredible. He was working hard. I mean, I didn't hear his name for quite a bit of during the game, but when it was heard, I mean, he was making plays and he was doing work. I mean... He was, he, he's not much of a passer, I've realized. He definitely is more of like the sniper than a playmaker. And I really enjoy that. I mean, he did, he did phenomenal in the game and he's only going to continue to do better. I mean, can anybody say maybe a Austin Matthews type performance this turn?